the experiment. In this experiment, we're going to be looking at the connection between rates of evaporation of different liquids and the intermolecular forces that are found within those liquids. This is an experiment that's found in the Vernier lab manual. We're using a Vernier a temperature sensor, as you can see here. It's got a little piece of filter paper wrapped around the tip. The filter paper and sensor are immersed in a liquid of some type. We're going to be looking at various liquids in the experiment. Once the paper has been soaked well with the liquid, it's then laid on the tabletop, as you can see on the right, so that the filter paper is hanging in the air and the liquid evaporates from it. We're going to measure the temperature over time for various liquids and take a look at the connection between evaporation rates and the forces between particles in those liquids. So the first liquid that we'll examine is ethanol. Ethanol is an alcohol. It's characterized by a hydroxyl group, OH, attached to a carbon backbone. You'll want to look up the chemical formula and structure of ethanol in order to understand what's happening in the experiment. Ethanol is the alcohol found in any kind of alcoholic beverage that people drink. So as I described earlier, we've got the beaker full of alcohol, in this case ethanol, and I've got the thermometer sensor in it um, with a piece of filter paper wrapped around the tip. The filter paper is soaking in the alcohol, and the thermometer is displaying the temperature of the alcohol, as you can see here. So let's press the collect button, and we'll begin recording temperatures. So we're going to let the temperature sensor record the first few uh, temperatures of the alcohol just sitting here on the countertop. Next, we'll take the sensor out of the beaker of the alcohol and we'll lay it on the countertop with the tip of the sensor hanging off of the edge of the counter. Then the alcohol will be evaporating slowly from the filter paper and we'll see the change in temperature over time as it evaporates. The temperature is being recorded by the LabQuest every five seconds and the experiment is running for a two minute uh, interval, 120 seconds. On the right side of the screen you can see the temperature displayed and you can see the time displayed also. So we see an, an initial quick drop in temperature as the alcohol is evaporating from the filter paper. And then as time progresses, the rate of evaporation seems to be slowing down. The graph seems to be plateauing a little bit. At the end of the experiment, we're gonna see what the final temperature was and the initial temperature. And you'll record those values and then calculate the change in temperature that occurred during the evaporation. So we're about a minute and a half into the experiment. And just about 10 seconds remaining. Were you surprised at the change in temperature we're seeing here. All right, so when the experiment's done, we'll click on the final data point, and you'll be able, there we go, and you can see what the final temperature was on the right. And now we'll click on a data point earlier at the beginning of the experiment at the plateau at the start, so you can see what the initial temperature was. There was the initial temperature. And now you can record both of those points and record the change in temperature that occurred for ethanol. So we're looking at the second alcohol now. This alcohol that we're going to use is called N-propanol, sometimes also known as 1-propanol, or even propane-1-all with correct UPAC nomenclature. You'll want to look up that, that uh, alcohol online to get its chemical structure, write down its formula, and draw the molecule. You can see the temperature is starting off a little bit warmer than we had in the last case because this alcohol has been sitting on the counter. The storage cabinet where we keep the alcohols and other flammable liquids is a little bit cooler than the room that I'm in here. So the alcohol has got a little bit of a higher temperature. So just like before, it's soaking in our alcohol, the thermometer sensor. So let's begin. So we've just 
pressed collect with the temperature sensor in the alcohol and it's recording right now just a couple of data points of the initial temperature of the alcohol. Once we've got a couple of points, we'll take this temperature sensor out of the beaker and we'll lay it down on the countertop with the tip of the sensor with the filter paper wrapped around it hanging over the edge in the air. So there we go. Let's now see what happens as the alcohol is evaporating from the tip of the sensor what happens to the temperature during this experiment. Compare what you're seeing here to the results that we had earlier with ethanol. Now let me just point out that propanol, propane one all, is another alcohol and like all alcohols they are poisonous. Your body has evolved a mechanism to detoxify if we drink too much ethanol, but our bodies don't have similar mechanisms to detoxify other alcohols. So other alcohols other than ethanol are highly toxic and you don't ever want to drink those or ingest them in any way. Alcohols, as you know, are also highly flammable and highly volatile. They tend to evaporate easily, as we can see in these experiments. We store the alcohols in a flammables cabinet in our storeroom, a special cabinet which is uh, vented so that the vapors, if there were any open containers, would escape um, and not build up in the room. So you can see in this experiment with the propanol that there's a much smaller change in temperature. If you've got the molecular structure in front of you, you might try to think about what that means. Why, why is that? What is the connection between the, the change we see in here, the change in temperature, and the intermolecular forces in the liquid? So we're done collecting the data. Now let's see what the final temperature was and record that. We'll click on the last data point, there you go. And record that final temperature for one propanol. And now let's see, remind ourselves of the starting temperature. There you go. And so now you can calculate the change in temperature for this alcohol and compare it to what we saw for ethanol. So the next liquid that we're going to study is methanol. Methanol is another alcohol. Um, it is uh, an alcohol that's used in gas line antifreeze for cars. It's also a lock de-icer in the wintertime. It's highly toxic as well much more toxic than the, the propanol that we, were that we were looking at earlier. Methanol can cause blindness if ingested, so you have to really take uh, cautions when using it. So we've got the methanol in a beaker as before. The thermometer is inserted in it with filter paper wrapped around it. We'll press collect on the lab quest to discard the previous data. And now you can see the temperature being recorded of the alcohol as it sits in the beaker. So you have the initial temperature displayed on the right hand side. And now we take it out of the beaker and we're going to let it evaporate. We'll lay the thermometer, there we go, on the tabletop and the edge of the, the tip of the thermometer is in the air with the filter paper wrapped around it. And the wet filter paper, the alcohol is evaporating from it. You can see the dramatically different result here from the previous alcohol and even compared to the ethanol that we saw at the beginning. Think about if you've looked up the molecular formula of this alcohol, think about its intermolecular forces and what we're seeing here and how that might re relate to those forces between methanol molecules. See if you can compare the strengths of intermolecular forces between the three liquids we've seen so far. Do the predictions you would have made based on their molecular structures match what we're seeing in these results. The temperature, as you can see, is dropping significantly, and I have a feeling it's going to go below the minimum temperature on my graph. So at the end of the experiment, we'll rescale the graph just to display the whole thing. Are you able to explain why the temperature is dropping? Okay, we are having a liquid evaporating. Why does the evaporation of the liquid lead to a drop in temperature? Is evaporating endothermic or exothermic? And why is that? See if you can think about that and come up with an explanation for yourself. So we have 110 seconds, we're ready to wrap up. And again, I'm gonna have to rescale the graph so we can see the entire curve. 
So there we go. The temperatures of data has stopped being collected. So let's press on the graph icon at the top, go to the options. We can change the lower number from 6 degrees Celsius. We'll just lower it to a smaller number to display the entire graph. There we go. So now you can see the entire cooling curve from 0 to 120 seconds. Clicking on the last data point, there's your final temperature. Record that. And now clicking on an early data point at the beginning, there's the initial temperature of the, of the methanol. So now you can calculate delta T. So the first three liquids we've looked at have been different forms of alcohol. Let's turn our attention now to something a bit different. This next liquid is a mixture of hexanes. Hexanes. So you can take a look at that on, on the internet, find out the chemical formula of hexane, and get a sense of its molecular structure and its intermolecular forces. So just by, like before, we'll begin recording the temperature with the sensor immersed in the liquid. All right, so here we go. The temperature is being recorded. You can see it on the right-hand side. Now we take the thermometer out of the liquids and we'll let it sit on the countertop with its filter paper immersed or soaked rather with the liquid and the liquid will start evaporating. So here we go. Take it out of the liquid, lay it down on the countertop and the temperature will start to drop. Now what kind of change do you anticipate happening here? If you've looked up the molecular structure or the formula, you have a sense of whether or not these intermolecular forces should be stronger or weaker than what we've seen before. So how does that mesh with what we're seeing in terms of the change in temperature as the hexanes evaporate? Hexanes are another form of hydrocarbon. So like all hydrocarbons, including the alcohols, they're highly flammable. Care must be taken when using them, when handling them. Normally, you would dispense them in a fume hood, which will remove any kind of vapors, and they don't build up in the lab where you're working. You definitely want to have the room well vented. A lot of these organic liquids are kind of nauseous when you're, when you're breathing them in. They can go to your head, so you definitely want to have good ventilation in the room when using them. So a very nice looking curve. Started up at around 18 degrees Celsius and we've got quite a dramatic drop in temperature going on here. So at about 15 more seconds, we'll collect the final temperature and the initial temperature so you can find delta T. All right, clicking on the last data point there you go. You can see what the final temperature of the hexanes reached as it cooled. And the initial temperature when it began evaporating. And now you can find delta T. So our next liquid is acetone. Acetone is also known as 2-propanone or propane 2 own again using proper UPAC nomenclature. Acetone is not an alcohol. Um, it was used extensively in nail polish remover for the longest time. So take a look online at its molecular formula and its molecular structure. So again, we have a beaker with acetone sitting in it. I've got my temperature probe with a small piece of filter paper wrapped around the tip of the sensor, and that is sitting in the, al in the acetone with the temperature being recorded. We collect data. We'll discard the previous data set, and again, we're going to collect some initial temperature readings of just the acetone sitting in the beaker. All right, with the temperature of the beaker initially recorded, we're then going to take the sensor out of the beaker. We'll lay it flat on the bench, and now you can see as the acetone evaporates, the temperature again drops kind of intermolecular forces are found between acetone molecules, do we anticipate that these forces are stronger or weaker than the forces between the other liquids we've talked about? 
So there's quite a, again, a significant initial drop in temperature, but it appears to be already plateauing a little bit. So maybe not quite as steep a drop and as deep a drop as we've seen with one or two of the other liquids. Acetone is a common solvent used in chemistry. If you've done some paper chromatography, you may have used acetone or a mixture of acetone and other liquids. And it's very good at dissolving certain types of solutes. I was about to give away the type of intermolecular forces. I had to be careful there. It's about 30 more seconds. You can tell from the shapes of these cooling curves that they're very smooth curves. There must be a very nice mathematical relationship to describe the temperature and time connections here. If you're interesting, you can if you're interested, you can look up Newton's law of cooling for that. So at 120 seconds, we'll stop collecting data. There we go. We'll click on the final point. You can record the final temperature. There we are, the lowest temperature it reached. And now the starting temperature before it evaporated. And you can find delta T for acetone. All right, for our final liquid, we're going to return to an alcohol. This last alcohol is octanol, or 1-octanol, N-octanol. Um, so you can look up that molecular formula and molecular structure online and think about what kind of intermolecular forces are likely to be present in octanol. I can tell you, looking at the alcohol as I poured it, it seemed to be a very viscous liquid as I poured it into the beaker. So let's press Collect on the LabQuest, discard the previous data, and we'll record the initial temperature of the octanol sitting in the beaker. So I've got my graph set to go from 2 degrees, as you can see, up to 18 degrees Celsius, and the initial temperature of the octanol seems to be around 18 degrees Celsius. Okay. Remember, I've taken it out of the cabinet. The cabinet was cooler than, uh, than it was in the room. And now as we let it sit, I've got the thermometer sitting with the alcohol um, over the edge of the counter and uh, we're not seeing the same result as before so we're not seeing a temperature drop that's kind of interesting isn't it so let's take a look at the graph at the end we'll have to rescale it to see what's going on but looking at the temperatures on the right something strange seems to be happening here right we're not seeing the anticipated drop in temperature um, that we've been seeing for the other alcohols and other, other liquids, I should say. So this is a result that uh, we didn't anticipate. I debated whether I should include this in the video, but I thought in the end it's kind of interesting. Um, it goes into problem solving. Let me see if you can figure out at the end. We're going to see in just a few seconds what the entire graph looks like. Um, see if you can figure out what was happening in this case of octanol. Why, why are we not seeing the temperature drop like we did before? The temperature has actually risen now. We're up over 19 degrees Celsius. All right, so just like before, I'm going to have to rescale the graph so you can see it. And then we'll see what the initial and final temperatures were for, for octanol. And again, this is one octanol. So there's our last data point recorded. Let's click on the graph options, and we'll change the maximum temperature maybe to 19 degrees Celsius. And then we'll, oh, maybe go up to 20 degrees Celsius, and we'll change the lower temperature just so we can narrow in on the part of the graph that we want to see. So we'll choose a temperature below 18, we'll choose 16 degrees Celsius, so from 16 to 20. So you can see on the left that the temperature began at around 18 degrees and then it rose throughout the experiment instead of dropping. So let's see what the final temperature was. It's 19.1 degrees, and the initial temperature when we began, as we saw, was 18.0 degrees. Can you rationalize what happened here? 